Michael, I, I, I think because this is uh, relatively new in Spain and Latin America and people may not be following the research, uh, could you share with us a little bit about what we've learned from the, uh, the two phase three studies of using MDMA for PTSD? Because, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think the results of these studies are um, when people hear about it, it often uh, shifts their view of, of uh, what this enterprise, uh, the potential of this enterprise. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's uh, our research, we've been doing research with MDMA in conjunction with therapy for about tw almost 25 years now. Um, and we set out to do that not because we wanted to do research. We were, we were clinicians wanting to treat people effectively for trauma and we were kind of forced into doing research to figure out whether there were better ways to do that. So from the outset, um, even though this has been pharmaceutical research through the FDA with a, a you know investigative drug MDMA, just just to help people, so that's the American Food and Drug Administration, which is the equivalent to the European agency that regulates what drugs can be used by um, by healthcare providers. Yes, and we've also had meetings with European Medicines Agency with the same idea for hopefully in the future. So, but the thing that's different about this from most drug research is we're not just giving people a drug. We're only using the drug three times at monthly intervals in conjunction with therapy. So it's a, it's a, it's confusing to uh, the psychiatric profession and the pharmaceutical industry in a way because it's so different from most drugs that we only give it three times a month apart. So the way we our studies have been designed, first one started in 2004, and now recently MAPS, Public Benefit Corporation, uh, has completed, after completing six phase two trials, has now completed two phase three trials testing whether people with PTSD, we measure their PTSD symptoms, and then they're randomized to either receive uh, concentrated all-day therapy sessions with MDMA or the same therapy sessions with placebo. And that happens over a period of several months with a lot of attention to preparing people for the experience with therapy sessions without the drug and then a lot of attention to helping people integrate the experience afterwards. So basically it's three, three all day treatments with two therapists with MDMA in which it's very open ended and people can uh, process whatever comes up, which is often their trauma and then help them follow up sessions to help them integrate it. And then a few months later, we measure the symptoms again. So what we found in throughout the trials is um, very large effect sizes um, showing that when you give, for one thing, um, that concentrated therapy tended to be helpful with or without MDMA, statistically and clinically significantly helpful to people to have all that concentrated therapy. And most of the people had, uh, had treatment before, um, so it wasn't their first treatment, but there, it, apparently that concentrated therapy using this approach that's not too directive was significantly helpful for people, even though they'd had prior therapy or most had had prior medicines, many of them. However, when we added the MDMA, the effect was much bigger, statistically and clinically significantly better. So what we have now is evidence in two phase two trials, phase three trials, that MDMA uh, may catalyze psychotherapy in a way that can be very helpful. Right now, Lycos Therapeutics, which is the new name for MAPS Public Benefit Corporation, has submitted a new drug application to FDA and it's under consideration, it's under review, it's been accepted for review. and 
they should have a decision by approximately this summer about whether MDMA will be approved for clinical use in the U.S.